Hi, in this video we will show you how to report MRI findings in rectal cancer. And this rectal cancer is located in the high or upper rectum. And we will discuss the relationship to the sigmoid, mesorectal fascia and peritoneum. We will use a structured reporting list as described in the radiology assistant. Just click on the website, go to rectal cancer, structured report list, and there you have it. And we're going to talk about morphology, whether we're talking about a polyp or a circular or semicircular tumor, whether it's solid or mucinous, because mucinous tumors have a worse prognosis than the location and the size and the T stage, the clinical T stage. T1 and T2 are confined to the rectal wall, while T3 shows extension beyond the rectal wall into the mesorectal fat while T4A invades the peritoneum and 4B is invasion of adjacent organs or structures like muscles of the pelvic floor. Then we have the mesorectal fascia, which is very important because in standard rectal cancer surgery, the surgeon performs a total mesorectal excision, TMA, along the mesorectal fascia so when the mesorectal fascia is involved you cannot operate and need to do neoadjuvant therapy then we're going to talk about emvi which is extramural vessel invasion and the lymph node stage so let's start with the location of the tumor on sagittal images now the rectum start at the sigmoid takeoff which is over here and the rectum ends at the anorectal junction on actual images the sigmoid takeoff can be seen here and on sagittal images it's where the sigmoid takes its horizontal course away from the sacrum now let's start with the sagittal series now what is the morphology of this tumor Let's look at two other cases. On the left, we have an iso-intense tumor on T2 weighted images, which is solid. And on the right, we have a high signal tumor, which is mucinous. Then we have to look at the shape of a tumor. The tumor can be polypoid, like the case on the left, where we see the lumen and the stalk over here. Or a tumor can be semicircular or circular, like the two other cases. Let's go back to our case. What's the size of the tumor? Well, it's about 44 millimeters. And the location we can measure from the anorectal junction up, and it's about 8 centimeters. This tumor is situated above the level of the anterior peritoneal reflection, and this is a important landmark here we have the peritoneum and this is the point of the anterior peritoneal reflection tumors above this level may infiltrate the peritoneum now let's look at the lymph nodes there, well there are several suspicious lymph nodes over here and the criteria for mesorectal lymph nodes uh, are as follows. You have to look for malignant characteristics like indistinct border or when the lymph node is heterogeneous or round. When you have these three malignant characteristics, even nodes smaller than five millimeters are very suspicious. When there are only two malignant characteristics, nodes between five and nine millimeters, short axis, are suspicious and all nodes larger than nine millimeters and all mucinous lymph nodes are always suspicious now these nodes are located very high along the level where the superior rectal artery and vein are located and that's about here and this can be very important information for the surgeon because sometimes they are not resected in standard total mesial rectal excision let's go back to the peritoneal reflection. A tumor at this level in the lower rectum, it may involve the mesorectal fascia or any organ, but it cannot invade the peritoneum. While at this level, 
on the anterior side it may involve the peritoneum and at this level in the high rectum on the anterior or lateral side it may involve the peritoneum let's look at our case where is the peritoneum well it's over here so the tumor clearly grows beyond the bowel wall anteriorly and invades the peritoneum this is stage clinical T4A. Let's continue. Now the axial series are perpendicular to the axis of the tumor, like this. There's a very irregular bowel wall, which means that there's extensive invasion beyond the muscularis into the perirectal fat over here. Now, what about the mesorectal fascia? On the dorsal side, it's about here, and we can see that the tumor is within one millimeter of the mesorectal fascia. And again, here, so we must assume that the mesorectal fascia is involved. On the left side, there is obvious continuation of tumor signal into an adjacent vessel indicative of extramural vascular invasion. And also over here. Let's go to the coronal series. They are along the long axis of the tumor. Here again, we see the extramural vascular invasion. And there are some suspicious lymph nodes. Okay, so the conclusion is we have a rectal cancer in the upper rectum. There is extensive invasion beyond the rectal wall and there is invasion of the mesorectal fascia and peritoneum indicating clinical stage T4A. Then there is extramural vascular invasion and positive nodal stage N2. Now, the criteria for treatment. Low-risk tumors like T1 and T2, which are limited to the bowel wall, or T3 tumors with only minimal invasion of the perirectal fat, and when there are no positive lymph nodes and the mesorectal fascia is not involved, these patients will benefit from total mesorectal excision, or in limited cases, local excision. In patients with intermediate risk, because there is more involvement of the perirectal fat or because there are some suspicious lymph nodes but there is still no involvement of mesorectal fascia they will benefit from a short course of radiotherapy and finally our patient who is a high risk patient because there is a clinical stage T4A and because there are multiple positive lymph nodes and because the mesorectal fascia is involved, our patient will benefit from a long course of neoadjuvant treatment. And then we have to restage the patient to find out if it worked. Okay, for more information, go to the radiology assistant, click on rectal cancer, and you will get a lot of information. So I hope you do well. Bye-bye.